Now, I said something in a recent video which has prompted a few people to write comments and ask questions off the back of it. And it was when I mentioned that McLaren, amongst other Formula One teams, don't use their own wind tunnel, but they use the wind tunnel owned by Toyota out in Cologne in Germany. And understandably, lots of people are saying, hang on, McLaren have this incredible state-of-the-art facility in MTC, the McLaren Technology Center. It has its own in-house state-of-the-art wind tunnel. Why on earth don't they use their own? The reality is now that most of the Formula One teams use the Toyota facility out in Cologne because it's seen as being the most suitable for the current Formula One cars. And uh, there are a number of reasons for that. It's a, a, it's a great wind tunnel. It has all the uh, very finest facilities. It's up to date. It's very, very good. It's proven time and time again through lots of teams using it over, over the years uh, that it works, that the correlation is very good between the wind tunnel and the car. Uh, wind tunnel time is limited in Formula One by the regulations. So they all have slots booked throughout the season where they can put their car inside that tunnel and collect data from it. Um, right, why don't they use, for example, let's use McLaren. Why don't McLaren use their own wind tunnel? Uh, when MTC was built, way back at the beginning uh, of 2000s, so the 2001, 2002, I think we moved in in 2003. I was there at McLaren at the time. Hugely impressive place. The wind tunnel was just mind blowing. It's this huge facility which was genuinely state of the art at the time. It's cooled by the water that's in the lake around the front of, uh, of MTC as well. Um, and it was brilliant. It was, a, it was a fantastic piece of kit that we thought would give us as a team a huge advantage over the opposition. And for a number of years, it worked perfectly well. It was great. Uh, and it probably did bring us some great results. Don't forget, we were in the mid 2000s to towards 2007, 2008. We were the strongest team, certainly one of the strongest teams. Uh, we won the championship with Lewis Hamilton in 2008. In 2007, we would have undoubtedly won the championship without uh, the Spygate saga that uh, took it away from us all. So things were going very, very well. 2009 came along and there was a big change in the regulations to the cars, if you remember. Uh, they went wider. Um, the front wings particularly became much wider and changed dramatically the whole aerodynamic concept uh, of a Formula One car. This is a 2000 McLaren MP4 15. Now this was the concept, the aerodynamic concept that was in use obviously at the time around 2000 um, and the wings were relatively narrow at that point. In 2009 when we had the big regulation change the wings moved outwards so the wing end plates moved out. At the moment if you look closely there the wing end plate is pretty much in line more or less with the inside edge of the front tyres. Um, now you might ask why on earth am I telling you this, what's it got to do with wind tunnels? Well the concept here, the aerodynamic concept of these types of wings was that the front wing, it would generate downforce obviously as they do, but the idea was that these end plates on either side you can see they're angled slightly inboard of the front tyres. So the whole concept was to direct airflow inside the front wheels through the suspension channeling vortices along here to basically take that front tyre wake that we hear so much about, that turbulent tyre wake that's so disruptive for the rest of the car. This concept was about channeling it inboard, away from the front tyre, in through the centre to be then worked by these barge boards and, and the rest of the car. Right, well in 2009, these things moved out. The front wing end plates moved out much further out across the, uh, the front tyre. Now the front tyre on a Formula One car, as we know, is a huge problem for aerodynamicists. It's the one thing that's so difficult to model in CFD because it constantly turns. And every time the wheel turns, the whole aero shape of the car completely changes as well. It's an incredibly difficult thing to manage. And because it's turning, because it's squashing and because it's rotating, the, the, the wake that comes off this is horribly messy and means that it becomes very difficult to control the airflow over the other parts of the car further back that need to use it and work it to produce downforce. So these are a big issue. These are a, the bane of an aerodynamicist's life. Um, so you have to find a way to take the wake, the turbulence off the back of these tires, take it away from the other parts of the car. Now, when these, in, uh, these end plates moved outboard 
and became a bit further out after these. This is how we finished 2008. In 2009, they stepped out here. Then the obvious solution to removing that front tire wake was instead of what we call here an inwash front wing, which washes the, the wake, washes the airflow inboard of the tire, we switched to an outboard or an outwash front wing where the end plate was wider anyway, but now has an angle on it and all of the front wing flaps and, and little flick ups on here are all about design or designed to, to take that front tire wake out and away from the car, spinning vortices off each of these little wing tips and all the flap tips spinning away here, which drags away, pulls away the wake of this front tire and takes it well clear on either side of the car. Then the middle of the wing, the middle of the inboard uh, tips of those front wing flaps on a modern front wing can be used to very carefully and very scientifically manage the airflow through the center of the car, past the now incredibly complex barge boards, much more complex than these things, and to be worked through the floor and onto the rear of the car and the diffuser. So the whole thing starts, of course, at that front wing. But the fact that we now have outwash front wings creates these huge spinning walls of vortices and this huge messy tire wake that comes out through the side. Incidentally, it's one of the things they're trying to clamp down on for 2019 by reducing the outwash capability of the front wings because they say through their scientific research that this big outwash that's coming off every Formula One car is one of the reasons it makes it so difficult to follow uh, a Formula One car closely in modern times. So they're trying to reduce that for next year. Let's get back to wind tunnels though. What happens, I'll tell you what, we need a model. We need a model of a wind tunnel. Stand by. A wind tunnel. Now, let's say this is a representation of uh, the wind tunnel MTC for McLaren. Obviously not an accurate representation, but for the purposes of this experiment, let's say that this is what it looks like. That car, of course, sits nicely in the middle of that wind tunnel. The airflow comes from a giant fan at one end, passing very, very high velocity airflow, uh, representing the speeds that a Formula One car would travel across the surfaces of the car. Now, with this particular type of front wing, of course, let's turn the car around. Let's say the airflow is coming this way, passing over the front wing, the in-wash in front wing sends all the uh, airflow inside through the center section, through the inside of those tires. It all works perfectly well, things are great. We switched to an outwash front wing in 2009. And incidentally, McLaren were very late to the party with this. Most teams immediately at the beginning of 2009 with the wider front wing, immediately saw the opportunities of an outwash front wing, which is more efficient in, in reducing that uh, or, or taking away that front tire turbulent wake than an inboard system, an inwash system, McLaren stuck with their in-wash front wing, even though it was wider at the beginning of 09, and really suffered as a consequence. And it was only later in the season, when they realised what everyone else was doing, that they had to change their concept and switch and come back towards or change towards an outwash front wing. Anyway, let's imagine that is now an outwash front wing sitting in that wind tunnel, directing and pulling all of that front tyre wake away from the front tyres outwards. What's it going to do? It's going to hit the walls of the wind tunnel. You need, for a modern Formula One car, you need to be able to use this outwash front wing concept, which every team uses now within the sport. You need a much, much wider cross section of your wind tunnel to stop that really big turbulent wake and spinning vortices coming off each of those, uh, each of the front wing end plates. Stop it from hitting the outside walls of the wind tunnel and really having a major impact on the airflow around the car, which is what it does in this wind tunnel and in the McLaren wind tunnel and in many others. And that is the reason that everyone uses this much bigger facility uh, in Cologne that Toyota owns. That's the reason for it. Right.
now that I've got a wind tunnel and a car, and if you remember a couple of days ago, I did a video on Flovis. We might as well Flovis this thing, haven't we? Put the hairdryer in it, get it fired up and see what happens. <laughs> now, I don't think for a second that this is going to work. It's probably going to be quite good fun having a go, though. Okay, pretty unsuccessful. Let's see if this is better. Now, I think we've learned a couple of things there. Uh, my model making skills of a wind tunnel were appalling. Um, hasn't really had the desired effect. And we've also learned that Mrs. P's hairdryer is rubbish. But let's have a look at the car. Look what it's done. Now, when you see flow vised cars uh, on a Formula One track, it's kind of what they look like, isn't it? It just shows you, I should have done this for my flow vis video. It shows you what uh, the airflow is doing over the car. And you can see, hopefully you can see that close up, that it does show the kind of lines that the car, that the airflow is following over the contours of the car. Of course, the scale of this thing means that it's not in any way representative, um, but, <laughs> Hopefully that's a nice little way to finish off the video. It's quite interesting. I mean, Rex is going to kill me because this is his. I've stolen it from his room while he's at school. I'm going to have to get it cleaned off. But there you go. That is the reason Formula One teams are not using their current wind tunnels, but all spending a lot of money renting out Toyotas over in Germany. Right. Cheers.